<coughs> Evening everyone, welcome back to my channel True Crime with Jess Rose. How you all doing? Um, it is summer in England um, and I've just got a jumper on. So no big car day. Progress. Yeah? Very exciting. Um, thank you for joining me again. Um, as you've seen in the title, this is the uh, story of Cherish Periwinkle. If you know the name, <coughs> I'm sure you will understand um, how I'm going to struggle with this one. Um, if you don't know the name, and obviously if, you, if you're watching this, my channel, obviously you're interested in true crime, or, you know. Um, and thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you to all my new subscribers and everything else. Thank you so much. And all my comments and everything. And honestly, if I haven't got back to any of you, I really apologise. It's just sometimes I don't get notified, but as soon as I do, as soon as I notice a comment that I haven't replied to, I do reply straight away. Um, so if you, um, like I say, obviously enjoy true crime, that doesn't mean that you can sit and watch um, stories about children. Um, and this is... Uh, one, it's um, it's about a little eight-year-old girl. It's a devastating story, so I'm giving you all that disclaimer here and now. It genuinely is. Um, I don't edit my videos at all, as you've seen. It's all pretty, you know, might as well be live. I've had to stop this three times now. Three times, because I just, as I'm talking, I'm going off because I know what the story is about. So, we're going to try again. Um, like I say, it's the story of Cherish Periwinkle. And we'll start with her mum. Now, her mum is called Rain Periwinkle. Um, she was born in Australia um, and came to the US, um, I believe, in her early 20s. Um, and she ended up in Jacksonville. Jacksonville, Florida, and she gave birth to Cherish Lily Periwinkle on the 24th of December 2004, so a little Christmas Eve baby, um, to uh, the father is um, a man by the name of Billy Jarro. I don't know, I probably have heard how to pronounce the name, I probably heard his name should I say, but I don't know how to pronounce it, I think it's Jarro, he looks French, um, they divorced um, not long after Cherish was born and, you know, a bitter custody battle ensued after that and it was all quite messy. Um, now, Rain went on to have two other little girls after Cherish. Um, and so what we're going to do, we're going to come up to the 21st of June 2013. Um, Cherish is eight on this, on this date. Her sister, Destiny, the next one down, is five. And the youngest little girl, Navaya, is four. Um, and what it was is Cherish, the next day, was due to go and visit her dad for his custody. Um, is that what you said? Custody for his visitation um, in California. So she was going on a plane. It was all very exciting. And um, Ryan wanted to get her some new clothes. To take with her on the trip. So Rain's boyfriend um, gave her a hundred dollar bill. Now where I'm getting this information from, really quickly, um, a lot, a lot of the trial, there's hours of the trial online and other online sources, um, but it was Rain's testimony that I actually am repeating this from and she says that he gave her a hundred dollar bill <coughs> but out of that she had to get groceries, um, cherish his clothes, and also have enough left over for um, the taxi fare to and back from the airport the next morning. So it didn't leave her a lot to spend, you know, it, it, it wasn't ideal. So she takes, now a lot of this is on the seaside, Majority of it is on CCTV um, between the two stores that I'm going to talk about. The first one being the Dollar General. Um, and 
it starts at about 8 p.m. on the 21st of June 2013, like so. And I just thought a four, a five, and an eight year old, eight, mm, you know, the eight year old, but four and a five year old at eight o'clock to start your shopping, not to finish, to start. I just thought it's a bit, but anyway. And she does say they hadn't eaten at that point either. So, but I'm going to try and keep all my opinions to myself till the end, um, which I think I'm going to struggle with, but I'm going to try. And um, so that's where we pick it up. You see on the CCTV footage, Ryan going into the dollar store, Dollar General, uh, with Cherish, Destiny and Navaya. Now, if we just pull away from that for a second, we um, come up... Uh, to discuss, well, we, we can discuss a man called Donald Smith. Now, Donald Smith, on this date, the 21st of June, was 57. And he had a rap sheet that went back four decades, this man did. He just got out of jail 21 days previous, three weeks to this. And he was just called a constant threat to children now i've looked into it and i'm so confused because you you always hear me praising the american justice system oh, i love that life means life and you know death penalty when needed you know i do because over here we know you know life is eight years or something stupid you know it's supposed to be 15 i understand that but it really is um but this guy just never seemed to, they never seemed to keep him in prison. And it said that it, they were never um, violent crimes against children. And therefore he wasn't registered as a sexual predator. He was registered as a sexual offender. And I'm like, I don't know if it's me, but surely any crime against a child should, is violent? No? Because they're children. But who am I? Um, so, like I say, massive rap, massive rap sheet. Been out of jail three weeks. And he pulls in to the Dollar General car park. Just after Ryan and her girls have gone in. And he pulls in in a white, blacked out van. You couldn't make it up, could you? Um, and... What you then proceed to see on this footage is the creepiest thing I've ever seen. Honestly. I mean, there's obviously creep, creepy things out there, I understand that, but to watch it in real time, it was just so eerie, it was, it was awful. You wanted to reach into the screen. If you've watched any of the footage, you're just like, oh my God. Because you see Rain and her three little girls you know, you see her kind of calling them back every now and again, like we all have if you've got kids. And if you haven't got kids, you've, you've been a child or you've seen people doing it. So like, come here, stop running around. You know, it, though you couldn't hear, there was no audio, but you could kind of see her facial expressions and you could see the little girls running around. So you can imagine she was getting a little bit stressed. Also, what we see that Ryan and her girls didn't see was this man loitering around the, the cashier but not quite enough to buy anything then would kind of reverse back behind a ballard in the shop and then walk behind and he does this for ages and ages in fact they time lapse the video all the while, Ryan and the girls are kind of doing their own thing, completely unaware that this man just stood there watching, just watching. And so what I didn't see on the camera, but it was said that took place, is Ryan was asking the prices of some of the dresses and she obviously couldn't afford it and she was putting them back and obviously getting quite stressed. And so as she's leaving the store Don Donald Smith approaches her and her girls and just makes from what it seems quite a flippant comment like oh you know you look like you've got your hands full 
you know, I've got some of my own. And look, I can't think you'd probably hear. And don't forget, he's 57. To me, he looks older. His hair's white. He's got a white moustache. You know, to me, he looks older. But um, you just wouldn't question it. You would think just an, an old man, just like you would an old woman. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, they're a bit of a handful today. And you'd go about your business. <clears throat> but Don decides to make Ryan an offer. He says he's got a £150 gift card at home that he can get his wife to bring for her to be able to buy all three of the girls' dresses. Because by this point, she's explained that she wants to buy Cherish a dress. I mean, it's said that maybe she thought originally she was scamming him in some way. That's that's just, I think that's just people uh, speculating. Nothing to say that that's what went on, but it said that maybe she thought, oh, you know, here we go, I might be able to get something for nothing here, kind of thing. Um, and he says, you know, I'll get my wife to bring it up, and you see the CCTV footage outside the Dollar General, um, and they're there for a good half an hour, uh, waiting on his wife and she said she asked him what car his wife was driving he said look a gold Corolla I don't know that that car but a gold Corolla and so they're waiting and waiting and in the end he says she's going to meet us at Walmart which it said it's about a 10 minute drive from there and so Rain <laughs> agrees to get in the van with her three girls and she says when she got in the van, she noticed that the passenger seat, the back of it, was reclined all the way back. Um, the middle seat at the back was gone. The windows were all blacked out with kind of blankets or curtains or something up against them. And it's just so... And you put your three girls, stroller, shopping and yourself in there. But they get to Walmart, okay? So he tells them to get out and he tells them, that, well, he tells them to carry on in and he's going to wait for his wife with the gift card. So you see Ryan and her three girls going into Walmart and what's quite distressing is probably a bit of a, 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 a harsh word, but you see her lose sight of all three girls so many times on this footage. And the youngest one's four. You know, Cherish herself is only eight, and then you've got a four, a five year, a four and a five year old, and you see so many. So now I didn't know. I've heard Walmart a lot, Walmart, Target, um, those. You know, well, those, mainly those two. I didn't realise until I watched this footage just how big Walmart is. I mean, I don't know if they're different sizes in different states, or you've got smaller Walmarts, but the one on the footage is huge it's massive um and you just see her lose sight of them so many times in fact you see cherish kind of go and grab her sister's shoe that she dropped and you know she's kind of watching the kids as they're running around and it's just it, it leaves you quite anxious watching these little girls just darting off in all directions saying that the shop wasn't busy you know, there wasn't many people on the footage at all. Um, but saying that, by this point, it's about half nine. And I do you remember me saying, they hadn't eaten, so she said. It's half nine. And they just got to Walmart. Okay. So, eventually, you see Don appear on the CCTV footage. And again, it's so creepy because you see him walking down the aisles looking looking for them and then the footage cuts to Ryan and the girls and you're like oh god leave leave please leave leave and it looks like it's so many times during this the the footage that you say you just want to grab them out of the footage because oh but so he meets up with them and you see him kind of loitering about while they're looking at shoes at this point and 
Then they walk to a changing room and she allows, Rain this is, she allows Don to go into the changing room with Cherish, not once, but twice, in the changing room. That can't be me. That can't be me. It can't be that he's like, what? Looks like I'll hold my, I'll hold my, I'll hold my input till the end. But I did say it'd be hard. So, you see, you don't see him going to the change room with her, although that's what Ryan had said that had happened. But you do see him and Cherish walking off together and then coming back. It's just, oh, it's just so weird. But again, if anyone was looking, even looking on the footage, if you didn't know, you'd say that was a girl and a granddad. It's absolutely, you, you would just automatically judge that that's what that situation was. Because Rain had basically eliminated any concern from her girl's mind of this man, this strange man, by being so trusting of him herself, they had, they had no fear of him. All three girls were kind of milling around him and, you know, Jerish was all around, you know, there was no fear of this man because they obviously trust, trusted their mother's judgment. And, um, yeah, it's... So, there was at one point that Ryan says he, does, he did something very odd and he kind of used his hand in, like, you much would with a sock puppy and he goes are you hungry we want cheeseburgers very odd um very odd behavior but um he sent cherish over to a mom to say he's going to mcdonald's now there was a mcdonald's in in walmart not out of walmart inside walmart and uh the mom says we'll have cheeseburgers and uh, this is about 10.30 now. Um, and then you see him walking off towards the McDonald's and Cherish happily skipping by him. Cuts back to Ryan with her girls, still looking at shoes, still filling a trolley. Because with this £150 gift card, she was hoping she could buy clothes for all three kids and... You know, and admittedly, he'd said that there was nothing else in the trolley. She wasn't buying anything for herself. It was just the girls. Um, and she's happily stayed behind doing that. And you see Cherish and Don get to the McDonald's, which is very near the exit. Um, and it's you can see that him kind of talk to someone who's mopping the floor. And I think the place was closing. The McDonald's was closing. And this is how I think he convinced Cherish to leave the store. Because after about 30 seconds, you see him walk out through the double doors and then into like a foyer bit and out of another set of double doors. Cherish happily skipping along with him. Now, Cherish, beautiful girl. Be oh, just a stunning looking little girl. And she had this lovely little orange dress on with a little flip flops and long dark hair with a pink headband. And um, she just skips out with him. And uh, you see them get to his van. He pulls out. He pulls in beside a car randomly. I'll explain that in a second. And then he pulls out of the car park. All the while, Ryan's inside the store, still milling about, shopping, quite happily, getting things and popping them in the trolley. Kids still kind of darting about the other two little girls. And it gets to, it's coming up to 11 o'clock, um, boy and I, and the store announces it's about to close. And she kind of starts to think, hang on a minute. It dawns on her then. She hasn't seen him or her daughter. And by this point, she's, I think it had gone about 20 minutes, half an hour by this point. So you do see her start to frantically 
go up and down the aisles and she goes to McDonald's, the McDonald's is closed within the store and she says again no audio but she says she starts then shouting for a phone because she doesn't have her phone on her and she starts shouting for a phone so my phone on my mind my, someone's to my daughter um and eventually uh one of the store members of staff lend her a phone or the store phone i'm not too sure she gets a phone anyway and she calls 911 and you hear the phone call and it's it's beyond infuriating the phone call it's beyond infuriating at the same time like they say with anyone's who'd gone who's gone through grief or who you're viewing go through grief you should never judge how someone should react to a, a you know a situation that's beyond the normal but Oh, it's just so frustrating to hear the call again. It's online. She just sounds half soaked in it. I don't know if she's tired or what it is or... I mean, you can imagine she'd be upset, but it was just... It was just so frustrating. It was, you know, um, I think a man's taken my daughter and she starts explaining kind of where she'd met him. They saw to the phone operator and... And the operator, you can hear, is a bit confused. And by this point, she, don't forget, she hadn't noticed they hadn't gone for 20 minutes. And then another 20 minutes goes by while she's looking for them and then apparently asking for a phone. So Cherish has been gone a good half an hour, 40 minutes by the time she's actually on the phone to the police. Um... You know, I think it's coming up to midnight by then. It's quarter to 12 or something. And um, she just says, oh, we followed her into the changing rooms twice. And I knew that was a bit weird. You think? Do you, do you think? Um, you know, uh, he wanted her to buy these shoes with big heels and they were for a woman. And no flags. Any point? No. So she's saying all of this and then she kind of says you know i think he's taken her i hope he doesn't murder her i hope he doesn't rape her and it's just i can imagine you would say a lot of things in in that moment i can't imagine actually but um in the sense of i can't imagine putting myself in that situation i can't but i just it wasn't what she was saying that was so but not bizarre, it was the way she was. It's very hard, you need to listen. Listen to the call and let me know what you think. Um, maybe I'm being far too judgmental. I don't think so though. Um, so, so now, the, what they do is they issue a bolo, so be on the lookout for a white van. Initially, when they look at the CCTV footage, obviously tie it all together. They then issue it an amber alert, so it's all over the news, it's everywhere, this, you know, the, this man in a white van, and he's, and, but she remembers he said his name was Don. Now, Donald Smith, like I say, is well known to the police, so realising it could be him, given his history, that's when the Amber Alert obviously goes out and stuff, and the, you know, it's put all over the news, uh, cherishes photos put everywhere and bless his uh there's a, a mother and a daughter um and they uh i think the daughter was going to pick her mum up at work or the mum's going to pick the daughter up at work and um, as they she's driving past a local church it's called the highlands baptist church she noticed a white van there and then brings the daughter back and when they get home um the grandmother phones her, and this is only, it's only at half seven in the morning, and the grandmother phones up, and she says, have you heard about that poor girl, and, you know, it, 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 she's been taken in a white van, and it kind of rings a bell for this van, because it was just, um, given the, the time of day, and where it was parked, it just looked odd to them, so given that, the mum says she jumps back in her car, and mum or the door so i'm sorry uh but they get jumped back in the car and they go and the van's gone by this point but they phone the police that call as well is online much more in keeping with 
what you would expect. Like I say, I'm not judging in that way because I know you can't, but at the same time, I'm like, ah. So they they obviously say, you know, we've seen this this uh, footage on the telly of, um, you know, a little girl that's been taken. We've seen a white van, shouldn't have been there. So at the same time, at about nine o'clock, obviously all this is going on everywhere. They're looking for this girl, you know, they're hoping to get her back. This girl, Cherish, I apologise. They're looking for Cherish. They're, you know, issuing everything everywhere. They, they, on the, on the, on coin, I think it's the highway, they spot a white van and they pull it over and it's done. And as he gets out, the uh, officer says he, he put his arms out in a really odd way. You can't see it on the footage, but on the trial he explains. He put his arms out like that, you know, when you're told to put your hands out and throw your keys out and everything. And he put his hands out like that, so it was just very odd. Um, but when he got out and the officer went up to pat him down, he was soaking wet from the waist down. And this police officer just screamed police officer just screams out she's in the water um obviously given where his van had just been seen they know that at Hoylands baptist church there's a creek at the back of it i think um so they rush out to the creek and they're looking and um yeah just under a tree with some debris on top of her the tide was still in um and so it said that her hair was obviously in the water so they could see her face and there was cherish lily periwinkle dead what was it 10 hours after she left was that say after she left walmart <sighs> and <clears throat> Basically, uh, the medical officer, who was a lady by the name of Melanie Ray, <clears throat> they have to do an autopsy and stuff. And um, yeah, she'd uh, she'd been raped, she'd been sodomized, um, she'd been raped all orally, and then strangled to death. They never knew what he strangled her with. The medical officer said it could have possibly been a t-shirt or something um and then something that stayed with me was when the medical officer says because um cherish had had some scratch marks on her legs and stuff and at the trial they asked you know could that have been from uh you know the reeds and everything from the water um they said that could that have uh, could that have caused the scratches? And she said, yeah, when he threw her in. And that just, you know, that stomach drop, it was a little bit, oh, many stomach drops in all of these, but that. Oh, can you say, can you say why I've struggled? Do you know what? I think it was watching the trial and watching the footage from beginning to end and see this beautiful little girl who was so excited about getting on the plane the next day to visit her dad to visit her dad, eh? And he knew. Don knew. He knew what, what they were shopping for and what she was doing the next day. And Oh, just horrible, horrible man. So Don's trial started on February 2018. Um, the trial's quite brutal. Uh, the defence don't offer a defence at all. Um, they went to cross examine, cross do a cross, cross examination of Rain, obviously Cherish's mom, and he said no. Don said no. He said don't pull her through it. And you know, you party, you'd be like, oh, no, no. He just wanted to put everyone through a trial. That's all he wanted. He had no defence. He won't. He won't denying any of it. He just wanted a trial. And so his defence team were redundant. They were just sat there, no closing ar arguments, no cross-examination of witnesses, just so he could enjoy his moment a bit longer. I mean, just the worst, the worst man. And like I say, you look at him 
and you would genuinely look at him like he was just some friendly granddad. White hair, white moustache, dead eyes. I will say that, complete dead eyes. Complete they. Um, and what really ripped him off was the prosecution played. Basically, they'd, um, they'd got a maintenance guy. He wasn't. He was a, a, an, like an undercover policeman posing as a maintenance guy to go into his cell and bug like one of the, um, just the vents in there. And just to see if he'd say anything to his cellmate. And it just so happened... That they were doing a tour of the prison. I found this really odd, or a tour of the jail. And there were some really young girls on this tour. And he actually, because you don't hear him talk during the tour, so all you've got is this visual of him. Now, you know what he's done, but connecting the visual of him to the crime that he's done, it, it's, it's so hard until you hear this footage. And it's him shouting to the cellmate or another guy. He might, might be shouting back, looking at these girls, these young girls. And he basically says, you know how old they are? About 12. That's, that's my area, that is. 12. And he actually says, I'd like to meet her in Walmart. <sighs> I tell you, I had to stop the footage at that point. I had to stop watching what I was watching at that point. I had, I had to stop. I had to come away from it for a bit and come back. Because that just blew my brain. And this was played out in the court to everybody. But like I say, he wasn't defending it himself either. So it's not like it was like an aha moment. It would have been if there was any defence being given. But there wasn't. But it was still kind of a... I think the jury at that point were like, you're done. Um, and when they went to deliberate, it took them 15 minutes, one five, to bring the guilty verdict. And obviously, given how heinous the crime was, to the point that the medical officer that I was telling you about, Melanie, Melanie Rye, <coughs> she actually, uh, she doesn't break down as such, but her voice breaks on the stand and she has to ask for a 15 minute break or a five minute break sorry and that's a medical officer that sees in her own words thousands of, of bodies go through her office every week well in her in her career and she she couldn't continue well she had to stop for five minutes because it was too much for her and um so, obviously, given how heinous he, the crime was, um, he was given the death sentence in May 2018. So, it took five years for, obviously, his trial and everything else and the, 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 the final. But it wasn't the final because, of course, it goes for an appeal. Apparently, in a death sentence or a, a um, federal conviction, it's an automatic appeal. But he went for the appeal. And as of April 2021, that appeal was denied. Um, that man will die. He'll, he'll, he'll die on death row. It's, it's just been one of the hardest stories this has. I think because of, because I've seen it play out. I mean, look, say it's all online. Everything I've, I've told you, it's online and the footage and everything else. But it's hard to come back from. It's hard to erase. So, uh, it, it, I'll just warn you, it's quite hard to, to view. Um, now, the reason I said I'd hold my opinion on rain, I'm going to try and not go in too hard. So, I'd say, I, I can't understand what she went through. Um, but rain herself was an Australian national. And rain had her family, she had sisters, she had a mum, and Rain had a daughter, an older daughter, older than Cherish, obviously, who she abandoned when she was five years old to start a new life in America, where it said that she was on drugs and not living a great life. Cherish, Destiny and the Bayer weren't living a great life. 
to the point where their Australian relatives, i.e. the girl's grandmother and their aunts and their sister, their half-sister living over there, begged Rain to let the girls come over. Begged her to let them take the girls. Which, of course, she wouldn't. Cherish had begged her nan, please let me come and live with you. So I don't think they were having a great life. And two days after Cherish's, Cherish was found, uh, both girls, Destiny and Nevaeh, were taken from Rain. Um, and they are now adopted by Rain's sister and are being looked after by Rain's mum. Obviously, the sister who's adopted them, their other, the other sister, and their own sister, the half sister, Rain's daughter, that she abandoned all them years ago. I mean, she looks about twenty. There's there's an interview with the half sister, um, not say Rain's daughter, Cherish's older sister, um, and she looks about twenty in that. So I would imagine Rain had been quite young having her. But she's just abandoned her. She's left her. She's just left to go to Australia. I don't know, what, find a part of girl? I don't know. I don't know what she was thinking, but... So, that's why... I've struggled with sympathy on this one. Now, a lot of people have said, you know, she's just as much to blame. No. No, she's not. No, she's not. She made some really, really, really negligent choices but as I've said in all my stories the person who killed Cherish or and any of the other victims I've spoken about that that's who's to blame but my god she helped in along didn't she so right that's it that's it I'm gonna leave it at that before I start and then you know I know from what I've seen online there's very mixed ideas of, of Ryan as a mother I'm not sure if those people who put them comments are aware of her abandoning her first daughter. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I just... I can't defend her, put it that way. I'm not going to come on here and attack. That's not what I'm here for. The case is about Cherish. Not her mum, not Don, but Cherish herself. Oh, and the beautiful little girl she was. Oh, she was stunning. Absolutely stunning. And I'm just, I'm just glad that her sisters now might have, a, a, you know, a nice chance at a life, a, you know, a productive and happy life away from that woman. Um, but yeah, that's that was the devastating Cherish Periwinkle story. Oh, it's just really hard. This one, I, it's got to be hard to listen to as well. Um, if you do want to have a look, there's so much online about it. Uh, the trial, it's uh, six, seven hours of it, it's online. Um, lots of interviews on there. You know, there's a lot of information on there, but I will warn you, if you do sit through it, it does have an effect. It's been hard for me to get to this point where I could tell you the story itself. But, um, yeah, thank you for joining me again. I really appreciate it. Thank you to all my new subscribers as well. Um, any comments you've got, please put them in the box. Um, please keep subscribing. I really want to do that live. One of the girls, uh, one of my subscribers did suggest that I can do a live without having to get to a thousand. Um, and I, I, I did say I was going to look into that. I haven't looked into it yet. I do apologise. Um, but I really, still really want to get to that thousand subscribers, please. Um, so I'm not doing the jingle, as you can see. We've, we've, we've eliminated the jingle. So just thank you so much for every, uh, for subscribing and commenting and everything else. And um, I will see you soon. Take care, everyone. Thank you.